following is a presentation of Unidentified Entertainment and 22nd Century Radio. Manassas, Fairfax, Washington, D.C. Exopolitics and ufology, religion and science, time and space. Hosted by Mike Smith. foolish wand waving or silly incantations in this class what tell us what'll happen if obama wins give us the uh, first day in oh the you're asking me like well, no are you asking me because i'm black or are you just asking me i don't know i'm sure he'll check to see if we really have ufos that's what i would do that's first thing that's the first thing i do where the ufos at that's got nothing to do with black that's, that's got nothing anyway. to do with black i'm like okay i, I was you know the worst thing to call somebody is crazy, is dismissive. I don't understand this person, so they're crazy. That's bull****. These people are not crazy, they're strong people. Maybe the environment is a little sick. When I was at your library opening, I was standing in your replica office, Oval Office. It's an incredibly uh, powerful feeling. I've never been to the White House. I'm not a Republican, but uh, um, I looked at your desk and I was wondering from president to president whether you pass a list along of, of secrets that only you and a couple of President Bush Sr., President Bush, Jimmy Carter, Gerald Ford know, like where's Jimmy Hoffa, or um, uh, what, what really happened at Roswell. So without, without giving away... Without giving away any state secrets, is there, is, there, is there something we can all look forward to in the future to read about that you know that we don't know that will really make the National Enquirer required reading? I don't know if you all remember this, but there was actually, when I was president in my second term, there was an anniversary observance of Roswell. Do you remember that? Yeah. People came to Roswell, New Mexico from all over the world. And... Um, and there's also a site in Nevada where people were convinced that the, the government had buried a UFO and perhaps an alien deep underground because we wouldn't allow anybody to go there. And um, I can say now because it's now been released into the public domain, I, I actually I had so many people in my own administration were convinced that Roswell was a fraud, but this place in Nevada was really serious. There was an alien artifact there. So I actually sent somebody there to figure it out. And it was actually just a secret defense installation, alas, and doing boring work that we just didn't want anybody else to see. And what I did say was that there really is no list, or there is a list, the, 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 the secrets. If there is one, I don't know it. I mean, I really, the, the Roswell thing, I think, really was an illusion. I don't think it happened. I mean, I think there are rational explanations that I have succeeded and I, I did attempt to find out if there were any secret government documents that reveal things and if there were they were concealed from me too it wouldn't be, I wouldn't be the first president that underlings have lied to or that career bureaucrats have waited out but there may be some career person sitting around somewhere hiding these dark secrets even from elected presidents but if so they successfully eluded me and I'm almost embarrassed to tell you I did try to find out. <laughs> well, that, uh, I do believe, by the way, I'll, I'll be just as one more flaky. You can also be flaky when you're out of office. I believe that now that we know there are not hundreds, not millions, but billions of other solar systems out there, thanks to the Hubble telescope and what we know about black holes in the universe and all of that, the, the dimensions of physics are such that I would be quite surprised if in the lifetime of people that are no older than 30 here, we don't discover some form of life in another universe. It's pretty clear that there was something approaching elemental life on Mars at one time in the past, based on what we've already discovered there. So I say that only to say this, I hope all of you, wherever you live, 
will continue to support space exploration. Whether manned or unmanned is not so important, but we have to keep doing that. And I I'm afraid that there will be a waning interest in it in the future. I think it's a great mistake. I think we should continue to explore the boundaries of our existence, both into the earth and beyond the skies. Live from the suburbs of Washington, D.C., proudly broadcasting just minutes from the United States Capitol, you're listening to Episode 4 of Time and Space. Religion, exopolitics, science, ufology, justice, sports, and more. The new space race, energy technology, the cosmic watergate, extraterrestrials, biblical archaeology, films and television, reports on FIFA and motorsports, all the latest from UFO resources, such as the Mutual UFO Network, the Fund for UFO Research, the UFO Research Center, NASA, SETI, and more. Stories from and about major news networks, including NBC, CBS, ABC, CNN, the BBC, and Fox. Fascinating interviews with paranormal insiders, religious teachers, subject matter experts, skeptics, debunkers, and as many comedians as we can manage to lure onto the show. Time and Space is produced by H-Town. It's his world and we're just living in it. Our executive chef is Mike Fay. Our executive slacker and street correspondent is TK. And your host, of course, is Mike Smith. On this episode, we'll be discussing the wildly popular, recently revived Mysterious Universe podcast. All the way from Australia, we'll speak to the MU hosts, Benjamin Grundy and Aaron Wright. We'll also speak to our good friend, Rob Swiatek. We'll try new installments of What's Today's Date, Name All Eight, and How Do I Cook That? We'll consider highlighting the Skeptabunker of the Week. We'll check in on our NORAD TK tracker. We'll ask Mike Fay what he has planned for the special of the day. Fabulous prizes, your calls and emails, and much, much more. You can try to contact us 24-7, 365. Feel free to leave a voicemail on Mike Smith's personal cell phone, 571-721-9525. If what you have to say isn't offensive, insulting, or unreasonable, and fits the show, are we asking that much? We might call you back. Look up. Do you look in the sky a lot? And calm down. You're finally listening to episode four of Time and Space. And now, a legend in his own mind, your host, Mike Smith. I wanted to throw out a, uh, a couple of clips for you. Just because, one, I'll be factoring these in to later episodes just as far as screwing around. Uh, and I think I had mentioned them to you, but I was looking to get from you, since you're more of an expert than I am, uh, some comparable clips. And the important thing here is to try to listen, especially this first one, to try to listen to the content. Because the interesting thing to me was the way uh, this was sort of laid out and defined and discussed so specifically. I just thought it was hilarious. This is uh, from an episode from uh, probably, it has to be season one, the way that it was all drawn and put together and everything, but uh, season one of SpongeBob SquarePants. Wow, look at that pop gun. Are we going to go hunting aliens on the moon? Oh, hush, silly. This is for harvesting moon rocks. Well, when you're done playing with rocks, you can use that for some serious alien hunting. Aliens? Are you nuts? I've been to the moon. There are no aliens. Sandy, Sandy, Sandy. How can you be so naive? There's evidence all around us. How do you explain Atlantis, Cowlicks, 99 cent stores? And how about those mysterious circles that pop up in kelp fields overnight? Ah, there's one now. SpongeBob, you don't know the first thing about outer space. Now go home and get some shut-eye. Be here tomorrow at the crack of dawn and leave your crazy alien notions behind. What I was trying to get from you was an idea of whether uh, your show, you're sort of comparable. I'm a big SpongeBob fan here. I'm wondering if Phineas and Ferb have ever actually tried to deal with the the story of Meep. The episode it, it has to, it's a two part episode, so it takes really? up a full half hour, and it's uh, the Chronicles of Meep. Okay, that's the show, the Chronicles of Meep, and a they um they're playing baseball in what, their backyard. What is Meep? Meep is the sound he makes. Okay. It's a very cute little critter. Who, I see. Who they crash a baseball into a spaceship. <laughs> and um, he gets down. When he comes down, he goes, Meep. Meep. I see. And, yes, so that's the... Uh, to, 
I believe that is the only one that deals with it. Wow. Well, we're going to have to dig that up and try to pull a couple clips can, from that. Can, can I send you... I was going to say, see if you can't find it on Dis, you know, Disney.com or I, whatever it is. You? Okay, Ferb, let's see what this bad boy can do. Go on. Pop fly. Cool. Oh, here it comes. Um, hey, Ferb, I know what we're going to do today. Run for our lives. Whoa, I think we may have just stopped and or started an alien invasion. I hope he's not too angry or hungry. Meep! Wow, that is cute. Hey, are you okay? We're really sorry about your ship. Meep! What's your name? Meep! Hi, Meep. I'm Phineas, and this is Ferb. Meep! What you got there? Hey, this must be his father. Don't worry, Meep. We'll fix your ship and you'll be with your dad in no time. Hey, Ferb, I know what we're gonna do today. Let's get ourselves totally busted by crashing our stupid toy in the backyard. Oh, hi, Candace. It isn't a toy. It's a real live alien spaceship. Oh, good, because this isn't a cell phone. It's an intergalactic little brother busterizer, which I'll use on you if you don't clean up this mess. What's with the spaceship anyway? Haven't you guys, you know, been there, done that? We weren't planning on going into space, but if we did, I'm sure there's still a ton of cool stuff left to do. Yeah, well, I'm all done with outer space. Never again. I'll stick with Earth, where I'm the one in charge of busting people who do stuff they're not supposed to do. Huh? Oh, that is the most adorable thing I've ever seen in my life. You guys made a bigger Rudolph? That's Meep. Meep! He talks? Well, more than fur, but Meep is pretty much the only thing he says. Well, you and your little bango robot better not show up at the convention and make me look bad. <laughs> That's strike one. Okay, let's fix us an alien spaceship. Meep! Where do you want to start? Oh, it sure looks a lot like home. Hey, look, it's Gary! Hey, come here, Gary! Gary! Wait! Don't go near him, Patrick. Can't you see this is all a trick? The aliens are projecting our memories onto the environment. You're trying to confuse us, Patrick. So you mean to say they've taken what we thought we think and make us think we thought our thoughts we've been thinking our thoughts we think we thought? I think? Okay, but I'm not going to fall for it. Meow! <laughs> yeah! You got him, SpongeBob! Won't Sandy be proud? Sandy! I forgot all about her. Oh, she's gonna hate us for stealing her rocket. But won't she feel silly when I bring her back a real live alien? Ah, oh, she'll love me. Come on, Patrick. The more, the merrier. Alien hunting! Alien hunting! Shh, Patrick! Don't let them know we're onto them. Exopolitics and ufology. Religion and science. Time and space. Hosted by Mike Smith. You're listening to Time and Space on 22nd Century Radio. Pleased to bring you our feature presentation. Hello. Hello. Is this Ben? Hi, Mike. Yeah. I'm speaking. Hi. Is Aaron here too? I am, Mike. Uh, How are you going? I'm excellent, guys. It's uh, nice to meet you. Great to talk to you. Yeah, you, you too. too. I've got uh, Tim Kirk here as one of my co-hosts.